I don't know. I honestly can't say that I remember what my experience with this was. Hi everyone, welcome to the latest MDs videos. In these kinds of videos, I give you really in-depth reviews of products that I have completely used up, or sometimes I have stopped using them for one reason or the other, which I'll share with you. But this is a really good way to get my in-depth thoughts about a product. I'll let you know if I would repurchase it, because sometimes even if I think a product is good, I don't think it's quite worth the money, and so I'll share all those thoughts with you too. You can follow Allure Beauty on socials, including Instagram at these usernames and handles here. Please make sure you're subscribed, I would really appreciate it. And if you missed the latest this video then make sure you go check it out. I'll link it in the upper right hand corner for you to see. All right so here's the huge bag of products that I've used up and it is a mixture of skincare and makeup although I go through skincare a lot more quickly than I do makeup. All right I'm not going to go in any sort of order here. In fact um, I'll start with V's facial moisturizing lotion. This is the PM version. Love this product. Will we purchase? Very affordable. Has fantastic ingredients in here including niacinamide. Um, and I would encourage you to check out CVS's version, which is pretty much exactly the same thing, but can be found, not always, but can be found at an even deeper discount. Ulta Maximum Strength per Acetone thing. Um, I, I lately for actually probably over a year have been using a product by a company where it has no acetone in it. It actually feels almost like an oil that dissolves the um, nail polish. It's a much slower process, but it's much more gentle than acetone and doesn't dry out your nails at all. So that's the product that I will continue to purchase. I probably won't purchase acetone for a long time. Random Sensodyne Pronamel. This is the toothpaste that I use. Although interesting enough, um, I have been using two toothpaste from different companies where they have very unique uh, flavors or formulations. So I know that in some of my past videos, I've shown toothpaste from CO Bigelow, which I really enjoy. And there is a, another company that I'll show you in November's What's New Beauty video, PR unboxing giveaway video. Um, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But this is great because I do get sensitivity. And when I use this, it's greatly reduced and I don't have that issue. My favorite all time vitamin C product comes from Timeless. It is not only super affordable given how expensive good vitamin C is, it comes in an opaque bottle. It is now a pump dispenser, so it's airtight. Um, it maintains the integrity of the vitamin C inside. It is appropriately formulated at the correct pH. Um, I've already have multiple backups of this, including the jumbo size bottle. So I will definitely continue to repurchase this. I'll make sure you check the description box because maybe for my, all my very, very favorite ones of my empties, I will try to link those in there for you for my most recommended. These wipes from Kirkland, they now come in more of a uh, lavender light purple color. Um, but I used to purchase these all the time because I used to be a regular makeup wipe user. Nowadays, I still do repurchase them, but I do not have to purchase them very often at all because I only use them for the purpose of removing swatches. I do not use them on my face anymore. I would highly encourage you to transition if you're still using facial wipes to consider transitioning to the double cleanse method. Okay, another thing you'll notice with my empties is that a lot of them will be cut open. I do this to get all of the product out and use as much of it as I can. I get anywhere usually between three and six more uses when I do this. This is the turmeric um, facial lotion from the Inky List. This is a good facial moisturizer. I probably will consider repurchasing in the future. Um, it does have an interesting scent, although it's not a strong one, and it has a very slight kind of yellowishy or orangishy tint to it. The In Common Universal Mask. I use this as my conditioner in the shower. I really liked this product. It comes with this kind of push down pump dispenser, which is very unique, and the smell is wonderful. I do feel like I used it up pretty quickly, although to be fair, it's supposed to be a mask, although I use it more like a conditioner, but the directions do say to wash it out. I don't know. That part was confusing, but um, I liked this product. All right, here are two concealers that I have always been using in conjunction with each other. These are from Misha, which is a, a Korean beauty brand that is quite affordable, and they do have an easy online website for US purchasers to be able to purchase their products from. These were at one point some of my favorite concealers. They're called the Under Eye Brighteners, and I had them, I think there's two shades, I have them in both of them. And I have been using them for the past three or four months, but I will say that I don't know if the formula has altered a little bit because they are old 
or what or if my own skin has changed but they do not look smooth and moisturized underneath my eye they do tend to emphasize a little bit of dryness and patchiness so um, they are not used up but I'm not going to continue using them even when I use them on the face they didn't seem to be long wearing or stick to my skin so I'm moving past these I switched out to um, one of my Kaja that's funny I didn't really register the fact that I went from one Korean beauty brand to another because Kaja is also a Korean beauty brand now sold through Sephora um, but that one I've been using under my eyes and it looks completely different it doesn't emphasize any patchiness or dryness so I'm loving that one um, yeah Paula's Choice this is one of my favorite uh, UV sunscreen type of products in the SPF 50 range. This is their Extra Care Non-Greasy Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 50 for face and body. For the longest time, I was reserving this for use on the body, but then in the past six months or so, I started using on the face. It's avobenzone based, um, and it looks really nice on the face too. So I will definitely be repurchasing these. Another moisturizer I really have enjoyed, I think this is my second empty bottle of this. It is from the company Mix Easy, their face cream, and it is an individualized, maybe not completely unique formula because the base ingredients are going to be pretty much the same, but you get to customize a lot of the key ingredients in here. So I really enjoyed that both times that I've done a customization for this. Okay, I'm super sad about this. This is the Tria device, and it's the one for use around the eyes to combat fine lines and a little bit of sagginess. And I have used this um, not 100% consistent, but I would say 85 to 90% consistently each night. Um, it's a laser, it uh, utilizes a laser, and it does hurt. It's like pin pricks around the skin, and I do get redness from this. But the last week or two that I have been using this, I feel nothing. Um, and I've tried, you know, on different parts of my body where I, and I have hair and I know it's supposed to hurt when it goes over the skin and there's, I feel nothing. So I am very certain that this has just stopped working. Um, it'll turn on, but the laser is not, I don't know if it's malfunctioning or what. It's well past the warranty, so I've had it for well over a year, but it is kind of disappointing that something so expensive would go out. It's been less than two years that I've had it, um, so I don't know. I, I was thinking about repurchasing this, but they're not sold through Sephora anymore, so I can't get it with at least the 20% discount, so I don't know. Okay, I've used up one of these 10% benzyl peroxide washes. This one is happens to be from CVS, their brand, the Foaming Acne Face Wash. The reason I use this is not on my face. I mean, sometimes I'll use it on my face, but I use this as kind of an underarm mask. And I learned this, I think from Dr. Dre, um, because just randomly in one of her videos, I think she mentioned doing this to combat body odor and to reduce the dependency on having to use things like deodorant. I still use deodorant and antiperspirant, but because I'm, I'm at the gym a lot, I'm climbing a lot, I'm, I'm sweating a lot. <laughs> and um, I don't, you know, I, wanna, I wanted to see if this would actually work to help reduce the body odor that you get from sweating and being grimy and gross. And I think it does very much so. So I've completely used this up. I'm on to my next bottle of this. I have it in the shower. So when I'm in the shower and I'm doing my hair, conditioning and things like that, I'll just rub it onto the underarms. I'll leave it on there. Not, it's, I don't wash it off like I would a face cleanser. I kind of smear it on there, leave it on and for you know a couple minutes at least and then wash it off. and. I think that this trick actually works. So try that if you're someone who um, wants to try to reduce your dependency on things like deodorants. This shampoo and conditioner set from Shuamura Art of Hair. This is the Moroto Volume line of shampoo and conditioner. I liked the way that these smelled. I liked the way the bottles look, the coloration of these. I think the conditioner is a little was a little bit thin for me. Um, I wanted something a little bit more nourishing, but I really enjoyed this line. I'm graduating this brush from uh, It Cosmetics. I actually really liked this brush because I would use this end to pick up cream contour, lay it down, and then I would use the larger end to buff it out. But I didn't treat it well when I was washing it and laying it to dry. The bristles are really frayed. Just looks really sad, so. Um, 
I'm gonna say goodbye to this one. <laughs> I can't even believe I put these in here. These are two basically panned um, MAC powder blushes that I have. One of them I have legitimately um, pretty much completely used up, and that is the blush Tenderling. This is um, like a really dusty, orangey-based color, and I actually didn't love it. Um, this happens a lot with things where colors that I actually really like, I tend to use them less because I want to save them. And then colors that I'm not that big of a fan of, I use a lot because I want to get rid of it. So that's what happened with this one. And then this shade Taupe, which I actually did really like, but it was a shade where it constantly got a sealed film. I was constantly having to scrape it off. And at the end, I'm just over it. So. Um, yeah, I don't know if that was just happened to my pan or if other people have had that experience, but don't know if I would purchase taupe ever again. This was a really fun bath gel product from the company Merci Handy. This was the slime, the unicorn slime shower jelly, and it had a shimmering opalescent uh, light pink color to it and a really fun, pretty girly artificial scent to it. But I really enjoyed using this it and it does have like a slime jelly texture to it. Ooh, a great product that I had repurchased previously several times before. This is Neutrogena's Healthy Skin Enhancer with SPF 20. I had light to neutral 30. I would use this if I want a little bit of coverage for the gym. Nowadays, I tend to not wear anything, especially with a mask, but um, this was something I would wear to the gym or if I was hiking outdoors to get myself some a little bit of coverage um, or barely any coverage and then some extra sun protection. But but um, recently when I looked at the ingredients, it contains, I believe, fragrance in it. So um, I have a different one from Neutrogena that does not have fragrance and it has better SPF and better ingredients. So I probably will not repurchase this in the future. A hair mask from Nature Lab Tokyo that I did enjoy. It was this really pale, green minty color. Um, this is the perfect repair treatment mask and it has a very herbal scent. Ooh, a very herbal. Um, bamboo-y maybe kind of scent to it that I really enjoyed and it was a good hair mask. Maybe expensive, maybe wouldn't necessarily repurchase it, but I did enjoy using it. The Good Molecules Instant Cleansing Balm. This is their cleansing balm. I don't know why I opened it. There's not going to be anything in here. It's a white uh, colored cleansing balm that they have. I would not even though there's actually a lot of things lately that I have enjoyed from Good Molecules, and I think they're bringing out better products lately, this is not something I would repurchase even though it's quite affordable. It has so much, so much of a fragrant component to it that it did actually kind of irritate my eyes often when I would use it to break down eye makeup. Um, so stick with your Clinique Cleansing Balm or the one from Drunk Elephant or uh, maybe the unfragranced cleansing uh, cream, cold cream from Pons. More Paula's Choice, this is the Resist Weightless Body Treatment, 2% BHA, so it has salicylic acid in it, um, has a white, lightweight texture, absolutely would be purchased if you have keratosis pilaris, um, if you have issues with back knee, I would definitely uh, consider trying this. Oh, I actually have a, another one of the um, SPF Extra Care non-greasy sunscreens from Paula's Choice that I had already used up. That's two of them total. A sunscreen for the face that I really enjoyed. This is the Comfy Water Sunblock SPF 50 plus and PA plus 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 plus. Anyway, um, the Korean brand sunscreens are far superior in their sun protection and broad spectrum nature um, because they're allowed to use ingredients that are completely safe, but for the because of the FDA in the United States are not being allowed to use by, by companies here. Um, but this didn't does not leave a white cast, feels very lightweight on the skin, isn't greasy at all. So um, I absolutely plan to buy in the future. I'm actually using a different Purito facial sunscreen right now and I would definitely repurchase these in the future. Paula's Choice BHA9 from the Resist line, super good for pinpointing treatments with salicylic acid to get rid of, um, you know, a, a pimple or a bump or a blemish, anything like that. Um, they now have this housed in a squeeze tube, which is a lot better than the pump dispenser, which was a nightmare to use and dispense product in a controlled manner. I still have my issues with the new packaging, but it's much better than this tube packaging. Uh, have already repurchased, will continue to repurchase. This mascara from Mana Kadar that I got in um, a box of Mana Kadar makeup, 
I do not like this mascara. I didn't use it that many times, to be honest, maybe between probably six and seven times. Um, it didn't do much for my lashes. Uh, the brush is bulkier than I would like uh, for my small eyes and it wasn't long wearing So I'm just I'm really not a fan of this formula. I am a huge fan of the voluminous uh, Original from L'Oreal have already I think I'm using actually right now uh, another uh, tube of this It's just it's one of the best out there. It has been for many many years This is the black brown shade and I have continued to repurchase this. This mascara from Alme was a pleasant surprise to me. I really liked it. It's the One Coat Thickening Mascara in Black Brown. I don't think they make this anymore, but if they did, I would definitely consider repurchasing. This is the kind of mascara I would use when I would want a very natural enhanced eyelash look where you couldn't really tell I was wearing mascara, but it definitely gave my own natural lashes a boost. This Essence by Primera, have repurchased this, will repurchase this again in the future. It's the Miracle Seed Essence Brighten and Hydrate. It just is a lovely texture on the skin, super great for after your cleansing, reintroducing hydration immediately back into the skin to prevent it from feeling tight or drying out. Um, great ingredients, so frosted glass bottle, um, not unreasonably priced, so really like this product. Tula's Clear It Up Acne Clearing and Tone Correcting Gel. This is also salicylic acid based. Let me see if I can, yes, 2% um, in a clear gel uh, formulation pump dispenser. I really enjoyed using this too. I would also consider repurchasing this from Tula. Oh, Youth to the People, I love a lot of their skincare. This is the Kale and Tripeptide 5 Vitamin C and Hyaluronic Acid uh, Serum. The only thing is I wish it didn't come in a clear bottle because you need to keep it out of sunlight, but otherwise it's a it's a gel texture, very, very lightweight, and um, is more expensive on the more expensive side, but um, I do really enjoy this product too. Ah, uh, Curology. I, they sent me sort of like a, a test pack first, and now I have full size items that I'm using, but I am definitely impressed by the brand. I think it's great that the brand allows you to um, try out, especially retinol based um, or tretinoin based uh, ingredients not based ingredients they let you have products that have tretinoin in them which ordinarily would require a prescription from a physician but they let you do it online with the physicians that they work with um, in any case I've used this one up mine has clindamycin tretinoin azelaic acid 1% um, 0.09% and 5% respectively and I have really been enjoying and impressed with Curology. All right, all these things in a bottle. Paul's Choice Resist Moisture Renewal Oil Booster. Um, this is a facial oil that you can drop into any moisturizer that they're using. It mixes very well. Um, is an oil, so will make your face look more oily, so maybe not most appropriate unless you're super dry for the daytime. I use it at nighttime with my moisturizer when I feel particularly like I need a boost of um, nourishment, um, but it's not thick or greasy or, or heavy or anything like that. I'm, I already have two bottles of this in rotation already, so we'll continue to use this and repurchase this. Also from Paul's Choice, the C15 Super Booster. Um, this is 15% vitamin C plus vitamin E and ferulic acid. Before I discovered Timeless and was purchasing this, this was one of my Holy Grail products. I probably will continue to consider repurchasing this, especially when they're on sale. Um, it now comes in a white bottle, I believe, with a uh, um, orange accents on it, but it's not a completely orange bottle anymore. Um, in any case, a fantastic, fantastic uh, formulation, but I think just the Timeless is more affordable. So that's why I will repurchase this, but when it's on sale. From the Ordinary Reserva 12 3% plus Ferulic Acid 3% um, have already repurchased this and will continue to repurchase this. I combine this with their Copper Peptide. Um, what is it called? The Buffet and Copper Peptide. I forget what percentage the Copper Peptide is, but I combine those to give each other a real boost of anti-aging powerfulness, and um, I think it's great. Next is two foundations, both of them from Pure. Unfortunately, I think both of them, some of the worst foundations I've ever used. They share a similar negative characteristics, which include really enhancing texture on my face. They do not look flattering or smooth on the skin. So I don't know, this, this stick one is called, I don't even know what it's called. It's in the shade light. It's their, you know, stick foundation that 
looks like that. And this one was the 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Longwear Foundation and Concealer. So you could use it as a concealer or dispense it out in the pump to use it as a foundation, which is clever and interesting, but the formula is just... No, things are so dirty. This was from a palette from Profusion, the brow palette. And I did basically use up uh, the two powder product sides. Uh, one of them was darker, one of them was lighter, but both of them quite gray based. Um, this is more of like a wax and this is a powder highlight. I don't really need these two. Um, I was using both basically the brow products the most or the brow colors the most and I'm done with it now. A product from Verse that I will repurchase in the future. This is their Rest, or sorry, Press Restart Gentle Retinol Serum with Bukukiol and Encapsulated Retinol. I think this is a fantastic product for people who have virgin skin, meaning you have not used retinol on it before and you want your first introduction to it. This is a fantastic product because it's going to be relatively more gentle than other retinol products out there on the market. It has a gel texture and a really um, pale green color that comes out um so fantastic and reasonably priced oh speaking of retinol this one from number seven is also a fantastic product that i've completely used up this is the advanced retinol 1.5 percent complex night concentrate it also has matrixyl 3000 plus i would say this is one step up from the versed product and this is a nice product for if you are trying to use retinol on your neck but it gets more irritated than the skin on your face i think this is a safe option to get gradual and slow paced retinol delivered to the skin on your neck but prevent irritation equally works well for the face I used it for both from the brand volition the snow mushroom water serum I really enjoyed this I love the packaging the frosted bottle the pump dispenser but um, I actually wasn't completely 100% used up on this product but then I dropped it and I couldn't believe it because I dropped it on carpet, I think. I don't know if it hit something, but the inside of the glass dispenser broke. You can hear it that it's in there. So that's what terminated my use of this product, not because I didn't like it. It is expensive. I don't know that I would necessarily repurchase it, but um, for what you get inside, it has a great mix of uh, antioxidants, plant-based antioxidants. So it was pleasant to use. Already have repurchased this, have two bottles of this in my rotation going, have multiple bottles as backups already. This is Paul's Choice Skin Perfecting 2% BHA liquid. It's salicylic acid, so versatile. It comes in a complete water form. So you can use it on the face, you can use it on the back. Um, every time I shave um, or, you know, do whatever hair removal, I use this on top to help prevent, to help calm the skin and then help prevent ingrown hairs. Um, so versatile. Absolutely will continue to repurchase this. One of my number one products from Paula's Choice. A powder from Essence, the All About Silky Matte Fixing Powder Compact. Um, I use this as a setting powder and even though technically I'm not done, I'm just, I'm, I'm over <laughs> the use of this product. It's not bad. Bad, and it is super affordable just like everything else in, in essence so um, I, 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 it's not a bad product it just didn't leave the most seamless texture at least on top of my skin and didn't necessarily give me long-term combating of oiliness or shininess so I wouldn't repurchase this particular one all right I have a whole stack of these um, natural deodorants from Schmidt Schmidt's um, fragrance free. This is the, the Ylang Ylang and Calendula. I have a whole range of these that the company had set many years ago and I was using them sporadically but for a very long time. Like you can see that I've used um, almost half of this jar and this wasn't even one of my favorite fr fra fragrances of the line. This one is uh, fragrance free is at least a third to a halfway done. So um, then I realized I don't know how I didn't realize this at the beginning, but I realized that these have a huge amount um, of baking soda in them. The second ingredient is baking soda, and that is definitely a skin irritant, um, which, you know, when you think about it, I can kind of connect with irritation in my underarms, and it's just not a good, good, I mean, if you're cleansing with it very briefly, that's maybe one thing, although I would not suggest doing that, but leaving it on your skin, baking soda, the pH of it, it's just, you know, I, um, I am going to avoid any natural deodorants that are baking soda based in the future. Gonna try to clean these out because they are glass to, um, hopefully have them be recycled. That's true for everything in here. Everything that can be recycled, I will do my best 
best to have it recycled. A deluxe sample size of the C firmidacerum from Drunk Elephant. It has 15% L-ascorbic acid, comes with a pump packaging, uh, opaque tube, airtight, keeps the ingredients inside. It should keep it stable, although I've had a full size of this where it comes out dark orange, which means it's gone bad. Um, but I do love this product. Just don't hoard it. Don't buy them ahead of time buy one, then use it consistently, use it up, and then buy your next bottle of this. Two products from The Ordinary. One is the Buffet and Popper Copper Peptides, which I was mentioning I use with my Reservatrol and Ferulic Acid. So definitely will continue to use these. It's really, really difficult to find uh, products out on the market that are not super expensive, that have copper peptides in them. So The Ordinary is basically the only one that is on the market that I would even and halfway trust, although I completely trust this one, um, that is not in super high-end range for price. So that is why I will definitely continue to repurchase this one from The Ordinary. And this one is the Ascorbyl Glucoside Solution 12% Stabilized Vitamin C. Um, I, what did I use this with? I honestly can't remember what my experience has been with this. Maybe that's a sign that it's not something I might repurchase, but I know I bought it for a reason and I don't know. I honestly can't say that I remember what my experience with this was. I mean, I used it all up, so. Another vitamin C product, this is from Skin Diva, the 20% vitamin C plus vitamin E plus ferulic acid. Have you noticed how those three in combination are really good together? They're very important to help stabilize each other and boost each other. Um, and now that I'm thinking about it, Skin Diva is also quite affordable. So if you don't want to try out the Timeless for any reason, I would consider checking out Skin Diva's website. And that's Skin D-E-V-A, not D-I-V-A. Used up a tube of the Revitalash Advanced. Um, I know there are lots of lash products out on the market. This is the only one that has a basis in science, the ingredients. Um, they are similar to what is found in Latisse. Not exactly the same, but they are kind of have the same, same derivations. Um, I have noticed a difference in growing my lashes with these, and that's why I continue to use it. I am already in the middle of a second tube. Two lip balmy tint color products, both of which I wouldn't really repurchase again. And one of these is from e.l.f. This is the Perfect Pink. I do love, I think it's from e.l.f. Yeah, it is. I do love the way the shade turns out on the lips. It's kind of a very uh, translucent, translucent, pop of neony pink. Um, and then this one is from Winky Lux. And the cool thing about this one is it has actually a flower suspended in there. But the thing with these formulations I found, it's very similar, is that they're really slick on the lips and they kind of just slide off. They're very not long wearing. They provide the sheerest and lightest of stains on the lips, but they just don't, they're just not worth it to me because I need something that will at least stay on the lips for an hour or two to be worth it. I've used up a tube of Retin-A. This is Tretinoin, this is prescription based, so I'm not really sure why I'm sharing this with you. I guess just to show you that I use it, uh, this is 0.025%. This is Cover Effects's Custom Cover Drops. Remember when these were all the rage? I have the shade G30. It's a shame because I, these certainly are not great to use as foundations themselves. They're just so too, they're too concentrated. They don't look nice on the skin. They're not intended to be used that way. They're, they were intended, I think, to be added to a foundation to add coverage or maybe even a moisturizer to become a foundation. Um, unfortunately, I just kind of, I purchased it and I reviewed it, but then I kind of never ended up really using it. And now it's just become a gloopy mess. It's it's absolutely a mess. So it's old. That's why it's being retired. And the very last product empty is from Salon Perfect. Uh, this is just their top coat. Um, not super long wearing. I'm spoiled by the OPI top coats, like the gel top coats that they have. But I would use this to uh, as top coats for when I did my toes, where I wasn't as worried about chipping and stuff like that. So it worked fine enough, but it's at the end of its life. Very affordable though, so. Okay, those are all my empties for the past several months. I hope that this was just fun for you. Let me know any comments or thoughts you have in the comment section below, and make sure you check out the next video. I appreciate you watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one.